go for a drive and come across a car crash and you just look at the impact and figure, wow, that car is completely mangled. I am not buying one of those. Man, they just don't make them like they used to. And that's for good reason. Hi, I'm Riley and I'm Trunk Talk's resident physicist. Oh, I didn't know we had that in the budget. <laughs> oh, apparently we do. Well, all right, thanks guys. Welcome to Trunk Talk. My name's Gabby and I'm Charlotte thanks. and this is a show where we talk about all things automotive and we do it in the back of the trunk and today we've brought in our resident physicist. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, although Gabby and I look very smart in our lab coats today, it's, we, just, it's just a facade. It's just a facade and we are not physicists, but we did bring in someone who is. Mm -hmm. What are your uh, qualifications? Uh, I went to McMaster University and I got an undergraduate degree in physics and a minor in mathematics. Yeah, I took a grade 11 physics course, so well, I dropped out. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's get it started. Today's topic is actually crumple zones. Mm -hmm. So if you couldn't tell already by our chaotic intro, um, and we're gonna talk about what crumple zones are, why they're implemented, how they work, and how they save lives. Absolutely. So Charlotte, I wanna ask you, what is a crumple zone? So here is the burning question. And just like what we were saying in the intro, if you have ever seen a new vehicle in a collision, you'll see that it's folded in in of itself. And you're probably thinking when you compare it to vehicles from decades ago, man, they just don't make them like they used to. If I look <laughs> at an older vehicle, it looks completely fine, even if it would be in the same type of collision. But that is for a good reason, and that is crumple zones at work. You see, what a crumple zone is, is basically it's the area of the vehicle, typically located in the front or the rear of the vehicle, that is designed to crumple in, as the name implies, on itself to absorb the energy of the impact. That way it's not distributed to the passengers. Now, it doesn't mean that, of course, no one in the, you know, in the vehicle is ever not going to be hurt or anything like that, but it certainly does its work in slowing down the force. That way it's not as big as an impact on the inside. So you're saying my car will sacrifice itself for me? Absolutely. Would you rather have a mangled car or a mangled person? Yeah. There's another burning question for you. <laughs> I guess Definitely cars. <laughs> so I guess my question for our resident physicist, why, how do they work? So what do they do essentially? Yeah, so essentially, um... We have in physics what's called acceleration, and acceleration is just defined as uh, something that's speeding up uh, over time, and, but it can also be defined as something that slows down over time. So when a car gets in a crash, it has, go, undergoes a lot of acceleration. And we have a law in physics that says force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if something has a lot of acceleration, there's going to be a lot of force acting on it. So what crumple zones do is they take that force, they take that large amount of force that's being uh, acted on on the car and they disperse it uh, through what we call deformation. So it's the vehicle deforms itself? The vehicle deforms itself, yeah. It takes oh, all the kinetic energy that it had and it spreads it out. It deforms the car through deformation energy. And slows down everything else and keeps exactly. the passengers inside safe. Yeah. Mm. But I will say, crumple zones aren't the only safety mechanism that automakers use to keep their cars safe. So crumple zones do a great job as minimizing the impact inside the cabin, but there's still the question that remains, what happens to the people in the cabin? Exactly. So what, what happens there? So obviously in cars we have spots that we don't want to crumple. Yeah. So for example, the driver's seat and the passenger seats. You don't want those crumpled. What? Because <laughs> then you get crushed. I, this is news to me. That sounds like an <laughs> auto eject seat and maybe I want that. Eject the seat, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're in, those won't get crumpled because we want to keep those safe. Um, other things that <coughs> can't be crumpled are the engine, uh, the batteries. Wait, so my big block aluminum engine yeah. It's not going to crumple. It's not going to crumple, unfortunately. Mm, that's news to me. <laughs> and that's a good thing, because if it did crumple, then it could cause fires and other things that could be health concerns, additional health concerns than being crushed. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Riley. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned how cars back then, they just, they were built different and how that's not a good thing. So old cars did not have crumple zones. Mm -hmm. It was only something that happened about in the 1960s. The first vehicle to ever introduce crumple zones was a 1959 Mercedes-Benz. So I feel like Mercedes has come up a couple times in this podcast. Yeah. And usually it's because they're starting something. Like we've had Bertha Benz, first auto theft. Yeah. First yeah. road test. <laughs> first road test. First test drive. First everything. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Props to Benz. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Keep it up. All right. Question for the physicist. Mm -hmm. Other than crumple zones, which we 
are now very, very familiar with. What else do manufacturers do to overall keep the passengers safe? Yeah. Both driver, passengers, wherever they may be in the vehicle. Yeah, so uh, other things that manufacturers do is we have airbags and we have seat belts. And in physics, we have something called inertia. And inertia just says that something that's in motion will stay in motion unless a force stops it. So the car crashes, but the people inside the car are going to keep going. So we need something in place Where to stop going? those people from moving. They, they keep going forward. They don't stop because oh, wow. of inertia. So seat belts and airbags provide a way to slow the passengers down in a safe way, unlike crumple zones, which, you know, crumple. We don't want that to happen to people. So that's why we use airbags, which are able to slow you down in a safe manner. Yeah. Wow. Another practical example of the feeling of inertia, too, is if you have ever had to brake hard for emergency braking, you're obviously going to feel that jolt a lot more. Your seatbelt might even click through that safety mechanism that it's designed to. You're obviously going to feel that force a lot more than if it, you're just coming to a rolling stop when it comes to, you know, a stoplight or something like that. So what these really are designed to do is slow down that force, cut that deceleration in half, reduce the force, and hopefully reduce the risk of injury, too. Yeah. Okay, so both mechanisms are meant to slow things down. Crumple zones are going to slow down the impact of your vehicle with whatever you're colliding with. And then your seatbelts and airbags are meant to keep the passengers slowed down in place inside the cabin. Because as we know, crumple zones are only on the outside of the passenger space, mm -hmm. right? Okay, I, I think I'm understanding this. <laughs> We're right. learning so much, much more than we ever did in physics class. Seriously, this is crazy. <laughs> I hope you guys are learning too, by the way. All right, my next question is, let's talk non-mainstream vehicles. So let's say a performance car, mm -hmm. racetrack, because those vehicles and those drivers, they need safety too, right? So how do crumple zones come into play on the performance aspect? Yeah, so that is something that is so cool to think about. And if anyone has ever watched um, any type of racing, Formula One, NASCAR, you're going to see that sometimes drivers can get into a pretty high speed and crazy collision crash and they just kind of pop out of the vehicle and they s are somehow able to walk away. And that's because even in some of these high performance cars, um, whether they're just, you know, supercars, stuff like that, they still have crumple zones, but it's going to be a little bit more of a complex structure. Um, usually what we see nowadays in our regular vehicles, and I wrote this down that way and made sure I had it right. <laughs> bop, 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 bop is in you know vehicles like what the everyday buyer has is you're gonna have a little bit more of a simple form where it's segments that bend in on in and up on themselves whereas in these high performance vehicles it's gonna be more of a complex structure that the crumple zone is made of usually a honeycombing pattern that's again designed to fold in and of itself so cool. really interesting that different types of vehicles require different types of support and honestly it makes a lot of sense too yeah. so Another thing I thought of is obviously larger vehicles, if we're talking about like a Chevy Suburban or something, yeah. there's a lot more room to work with to make those crumple zones very, very large. And that's largely why you'll see a lot of people buying large vehicles because they feel safer in them. But compact cars still utilize the technology yep. of crumple zones, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're curious as to why a lot of people are going towards big SUVs and leaving out small compact cars, check out our podcast that we've done on that. The Absolutely. Death, the rise and fall of compact cars. <laughs> That is titled something like that, right? <laughs> something like that. Something like that. And as we close off today's episode, I want to share a fun fact with you guys. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So I always like to do this. And this one's actually Hyundai related, which makes sense because, Ooh. of course, we do work for a Kia and Hyundai group. So back in, I believe it was 2016, Hyundai Canada released a commercial or an ad for their new superstructure. And did you guys know that Hyundai is not only an automotive manufacturer? They're also a steel manufacturer, so they make their own steel in-house. It's high strength, high tensile steel, which is pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Pretty darn cool. Pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> so because of this, they're able to use very, very good quality steel at a lower cost. And then, of course, the Kia product is an umbrella company of Hyundai, so we also get that in our vehicles. Essentially, starting off with the Elantra, they introduced something called a superstructure, and that was the frame of the vehicle. So it's high density steel lightweight too so great fuel efficiency so you would think huh lightweight steel whatever so this frame weighed just about 650 pounds do you know how much it could hold how much it could carry how much hmm how seven much? elantras 
seven lot. fully built Elantras with seats, you know, with their safety features, with everything in Elantras. it. Elantras. Yeah, not Elantra I don't even think we have that many Elantras on the lot. Yeah, our uh, floor plan does not have seven Elantras. <laughs> But they could stack seven Elantras on top of this 650-pound frame, and it did not crumble in on itself. That's course, crazy. This isn't a crumple zone we're talking about. It is the actual frame of the vehicle, mm -hmm. so where your passengers are going to be seated inside. Um, and, yeah, the total of the seven weight of the seven Elantras was just over 27,000 pounds. That's so. insane. Yeah, And hopefully that shows you just how much uh, vehicle safety standards yeah. and safety measures have come in the past couple of years is, you know, obviously... On the unfortunate part is that we see this technology and this innovation because there has been a need for it and hopefully as we continue to learn more and people continue to drive safely that being, being the biggest key is uh we'll start to see a you know uh, reduced auto auto related accidents is what i hope for or less fatal less accidents. fatal <laughs> <laughs> all right well, I think this is certainly a chaotic, it, a chaotic yet informative <laughs> podcast. I'd like to thank Riley again for joining us. You're our very first guest on the Kia Hyundai channel. I'm on it. Trunk yeah. Talk <laughs> podcast. Um, and a very smart one. I think you explained everything very, very well. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for being having our me. In house yeah. physicist. Physicist, I'm <laughs> sure we'll rely on you for future episodes as well, too. If you guys have any topics you'd like discussed on this podcast, Please let us know. We're happy to bring in the professionals. Let me call in our obvious sources. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned every Sunday at what, 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. We drop a new episode every single week. Thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you next time. If you want to see more of Gabby and myself, you can find us on YouTube at the Kia Hyundai channel. But until then, we will see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.